All righty. Now, now that you're pumped up, you're going to have to be because we have three guests that's going to give you an insight on how you can unlock a parish. But first, I want you to know about a parish in Mumbai, India, and how it transformed their parishioners from just being Sunday Catholics to experiencing more of Jesus. If that's amazing to you, give me an amen in the chat box right now. Where are we watching? Facebook, YouTube, give me an amen in the chat box. And if you're ready, watch this video. I am Father Savio de Souza. I'm a Salesian of Don Bosco. I am the parish priest over here in this church. The name of our church is, it is St. Dominic Savio's Church and we are located in a place called Wadala in Mumbai. So when we went for this uh, seminar on the divine renovation, uh, part of the Alpha study, they asked us some questions about our parish. One of it was about how many parishioners are there in your parish and how many of them attend Sunday Mass. I realized that uh, while we were about 4,500 Catholics, only about a thousand people came for the weekend Eucharist. So that already shook me up a little. Together with that, uh, another question was, among these people, how many of them are involved in active ministry in the parish? And then I realized it was less than 5%. Reflecting on that, I realized they were not into ministry because they were not really into Jesus. They had not had a full and proper personal encounter with Jesus. I realized that Alpha can give that type of an experience to the people. And so when I went in for Alpha, it was more so that how can I give or how can I share an experience of Jesus with my parishioners, with the people of my parish. Because I felt that once they are enthused about Jesus, then they will come to get involved in ministry in the parish. And so that is where we came from. So getting people involved into ministry, but more importantly, giving them an experience of Jesus. So when we actually started Alpha, I initially had a group of people who were wondering, now for three months, how are we going to leave all our Sundays free for Alpha? So they came uh, with a little question mark in their heads. But I think by the time that we had the third meeting, they had already involved themselves and were inserted into Alpha quite completely. So this group of people who started off with a little question mark, then their eyes started lighting up. As we went into understanding more about Jesus, more about the Bible, more about our Christianity, you could see that their questions were getting answered and so they wanted to come with more questions, looking for more answers because their faith and their Christianity was becoming meaningful. But for me, the best part of the Alpha was when these people who did the Alpha, they themselves convinced other people you are missing out on something. There is a desire to speak about him to others or to, to spread his message to others. And when we are talking about this new evangelization, I think this is what it is. That in the place where you are, to be able to project Jesus, in the place as the person you are, to be able to you know witness to Jesus in the world, that will raise the questions and people ask you and then you can do the direct evangelization. So I believe that our people are in that stage now. They are enthusiastic about it. And that is the change that I'm seeing in them. A personal love for Jesus and that desire to share it with others, which I think both are equally important because when they are filled by themselves with a the love for Jesus, that drives them forward. And they've got a message to give to other people. And uh, that is what the, the renovation that I want in the parish. That type of a divine renovation, I think, is what we need here. Alpha is personal. Each person who would attend was given that feeling, you are special, you are unique, you have a place in this group. And it is that personal outreach, this personal interaction, especially with those with the leaders of the Alpha, it was that that brought the people coming back. If I would tell someone who was considering starting Alpha in their parish or in their church, I would tell them, initially you will get, you will feel afraid because you do not know what you are walking into. You do not know what it is going to cost you. You do not know how much it's going to consume you. And uh, that fear was just a wee bit within me. But once we conducted Alpha, and I seen the results of Alpha, not just on me, but in the people who went through Alpha, I think it is worth it. 
So while that initial fear or hesitancy might be there, it is worth the risk. Amen. Certainly worth the risk. Just put Jesus out there, lift him up, and he will draw all men unto him. Can I get an amen in the chat box? Come on. I hope you're feeling fine, excited. We've got a lot of uh, speakers tonight, and now we're going to move on. As I mentioned earlier, we have three guests, one of which you just heard. Let's welcome Father Savio de Souza and Avril Batista from St. Dominic Savio Church in Mumbai, India. Hello, Father and Avril. Hi. How are you? Yeah, I'm right. good. Very happy to be with good you, Kevin, you. and with all these wonderful people. Certainly. Thank you for being here. And they'll be joined by the Director of Global Strategy for Divine Renovation. Please welcome Fiona O'Reilly. Hi, Fiona. Hello, everyone. We're so delighted to be able to join you here today. It's been a great session so far, so we're looking forward to what's coming next. Exactly. And uh, you're now calling in from the UK, right? I'm calling in from the west of Ireland, so a bit a bit of a ways from where most other folks are, but still great to be here. Fantastic. We're all on uh, different time zones uh, in India and also in uh, west of Ireland, but it's really great that we can all get together right here, share about our faith, talk about our faith, and uh, do some evangelization work as well. So I think I'll leave it to you. Um, let me just remind the viewers, if any questions for Fiona, Father Savio or Avril, please put them in the comment section in the chat box. Just type TP2020 in front so that we can pick out your questions from all the comments. All right. Okay, Fiona, over to you. Thank you. And as Kevin said, uh, my name is Fiona O'Reilly. I'm the Director of Global Strategy with Divine Renovation, which is a ministry that works with Catholic parishes, helping them move from maintenance to mission. And I'm so pleased today to be joined by Father Savio de Souza and Avril Baptista, who will introduce themselves uh, just in a moment. But really, this whole session is going to be about sharing the journey that their parish has been on as it's made that move from maintenance to mission, helped in huge measure by, uh, by the Alpha programme. We're going to be having a look at how Alpha has helped parishes come alive and also unpack just a little bit how we can answer that call in Evangelii Gaudium to order all of the structures, all of the aspects of parish life so we can be at our most effective in helping the world around us come to know, love and serve Jesus Christ. Uh, and, you know, as with all things, we do our bit, but this has to be grounded in prayer. It has to start, continue and end uh, with the Lord. And so, Father Savio, before we go any further, could I ask you just to open us in prayer, please? Sure, it's a pleasure. We place ourselves in the presence of God and we sign ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, our loving God, we thank you for bringing us here together for Transforming Parishes 2020. We come together in your love. We come to experience your love and we come to share your love with people from all different parts of the world. Your son, when he left us, he gave us a great commission. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. Father, we pray, send down your Holy Spirit upon us. Give us the grace and the courage to go and make disciples of the whole world. Fill us with the same missionary zeal of the early church as you accept our, as we accept our missionary identity may be boldly proclaiming your saving love all over the world mother mary be with us and walk with us in this journey we make this prayer for christ our lord amen amen, amen. Thank you, Father Savio. And I know we got a little sneak peek into St. Dominic Savio's in Mumbai, which is your parish. But before we go uh, too much into the content, could I get you and Avril just to introduce yourself a little bit more so that those joining us have a sense of who you are and where you're coming from? I think I've said enough about myself, but I'm proud to be a Salesian <laughs> priest. And I have experienced the love of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. And, uh, you know, as a priest, I want to share this love with the people in my parish, people beyond my parish, and especially with youngsters all over. Hi, and I'm Avril, also from St. Dominic Savio Parish, Varala, Mumbai. I have been a coordinator with Alpha 
and I'm now involved with Divine Renovation. Enriched with the love of Jesus, I want to share my faith experience with people around me. Thank you, Avril. And I know for, for both of you, uh, this last year has been a voyage of discovery as you've found your feet with Alpha and then started to see how Alpha and applying the, the principles that divine renovation brings can really unlock a parish and help it come to life. So perhaps for those joining us, I, tell us a little bit more about the parish and about what your journey over the past year has been. Okay, yes. You know, ours is a very quiet and uh, cozy parish. We have about 1,200 families and we basically function in two languages, in English as well as Tamil. Worship is good. The, the activities in the church are fairly vibrant. The church is, has a lot of spiritual energy. But I was into my third year as, uh, as a parish priest and as I was preparing for the new year, I realized that you know it was just the same activities and I was changing the dates of those activities. And then I realized a routine had set in. And together with that, I also realized you know, that not many people had had a, a spiritual experience of Jesus, a personal experience of Jesus. When you put these together with a declining attendance in the church, I knew something was wrong. And around that time, I... Yeah, I participated in a priest meeting of about 400 priests of the Mumbai Archdiocese where Father K.T. Emmanuel, Adele Pereira and Father Melroy presented to us their experience at St. Benedict's Parish in Halifax. They spoke about the divine renovation, but they spoke about Alpha. And I was taken up with the flyer of Alpha because there was a question mark and that question mark was crooked. It was tilted. And I said, you know, there's a philosopher in me that got tickled. And I started asking Adele about Alpha and, uh, you know, what it was about. And to cut a long story short, in about six months, we had Alpha operating in the St. Dominic Savio Parish because of Adele and a wonderful group of, of people. But actually, Avril was a part of this, of the, of the Alpha right from day one. Avril, why don't you speak to us and tell us your experience of the Alpha? Avril, can you hear us? I wonder if she's having some issues with her technology. I know uh, it's been just a huge journey Avril has been part of from the beginning. Uh, Avril, are you able to hear us now? Maybe share a little more about that? Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, I can. So sorry about that. Okay. Uh, there were many great uh, first experiences. Uh, it's light and super casual. You are not bound to commit to the program, so it does not over overwhelm you. And that is what brought us back each week. The small group discussions are defining. Questions were built not with the intentions of giving us set prescribed answers, but to lead you into discovering them for yourself. These groups create a safe place where no one is judging you. Rather, one is encouraged to voice your opinions, uh, ask hard questions, even vent out your discontent. This fosters an intimate spiritual support group. So these are the experiences what got me to commit, uh, commit to the training held in June 2019. We did the pilot alpha with just eight guests in August of that same year. We had some hand-holding from Nirmala and Adele from Alpha Mumbai at that time, but mostly we learned by doing on the ground. And in January 2020, we ran alpha independently for a group of about uh, 20, which came to an abrupt halt due to, the, due to the lockdown. Alpha has helped relieve, revive my faith. Jesus is alive and tangible once again. I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit that I had relegated to the periphery of my life. But more importantly, I discovered I wanted to share that joy with others. Yes, a little after this, around uh, in June 2019, I was invited as a part of a group from Bombay. We were about 20 of us as guests of Alpha Asia Pacific. And I participated in Experiencing Alpha 2019, the Leadership Conference, as well as Transforming Parishes 2019 as a guest. Uh, Reverend Tolman was there at that meeting coordinating the whole stuff. Uh, there I realized people were full of a spiritual energy. The worship was amazing. And you know, I had a, you had a hall full of people filled with the Holy Spirit and thriving. 
and i said this is what i want for saint dominic xavier parish and that is what i realized was happening actually in saint dominic xavier's parish as i said in the interview before you know people were driven by god people had a, a, a light their, their eyes were shining brightly with jesus they were beginning to experience jesus and i put it the cause was alpha people were especially taken up and wanted to spread this message with others you know people's lives were changing people's lives were changing yes father savio this is true of jokim he recently encountered the lord he was not an active catholic and seldom went to church uh, he was more literally uh, i'd say comfortable on the fringes of the community alpha started him on his quest to seek god again the questions triggered his curiosity to understand and then he began to read the bible which he was not familiar with to get to know his religion better today he participates wholeheartedly in community fellowships as volunteer with alpha he leads the team in prayer he hosts sessions and is also a helper in the small group discussions his wife and their two children are part of the current online alpha yeah and like jokim there are quite a few others in our parish just now you know but uh, getting people into alpha was easy what was challenging was sustaining them in the alpha that required a spiritual energy and that is where you know people i saw this change those people who were committed were filled with the holy spirit we also had a strong intercessory group and i depend on them a lot for their prayer and their support besides this group had to learn quickly but they did learn and then as they were going on i realized that now we can have alpha twice every year in our parish that's true alpha has evolved gradually and people are energized for god we've successfully transitioned online and on 2nd august began alpha online with a group of about 50 we strive to include a different mix of people our current alpha have guests who are not part of church life like in, those from interfaith marriages so though the dynamics of the team keep changing and evolving with lydia leading we have formed a sustainable team of about 18 volunteers of which eight are youngsters it's amazing to see them proactively take on leadership responsibility we have jonathan and jennifer young adults and the initial team members quite and restrain they have really come into their own on alpha as one of our active and committed members jonathan is also part of the music ministry and handles almost single handedly all the technical aspects of our team jennifer on the other hand is a strong prayer warrior who's playing a key role in influencing others in the tamil speaking community to be active in the church through catechism the youth group she continues to bring people to alpha so in this way we are building a team of individuals who want to take their faith experience to their other ministries yeah you know like uh, daniel ang was saying uh, a parish gets transformed when people get transformed and that was happening in in a parish people were becoming more outward focused people were becoming more mission focused a parish was becoming invitational and we had some minor setbacks because of the pandemic alpha came into an abrupt halt halfway through the program due to the lockdown the team then had to undergo training in order to make the transition online so as a result of this roles had to be adjusted to suit the online requirements and of, of uh, with that we had a few people who felt that they were not needed so we had to take that into account also the lack of face to face fellowship took some getting used to however due to the isolation we noticed people felt the need to come together to talk to pray we did lose some guests due to the use of technology and connectivity initially we were also tied down by technical issues and our prayer intensity dropped but it picked up after everyone settled in yeah and while the challenges were very real that the challenges were pretty serious but thanks to alpha people were being grounded in prayer and people were growing in their relationship with jesus 
as i said from being inward focused people were becoming outward focused together with this thanks to alpha we also realized the importance and the significance of fellowship with this fellowship there was also the need of having more and more leaders so we had the the leadership pipeline that was you know giving us more and more leaders overall what i would say is that you know people were being awakened from their spiritual slumber not only were people being able to pray and uh, coming to jesus but at the same time jesus was pushing them out into evangelization to spread the message to share jesus with others i really believe that all this was possible only because of the divine renovation coaching that was happening at this time in our parish because i realized that the divine renovation was giving a purpose and a direction to our par- uh, to our parish no uh, i for maybe for everybody might not know what is the divine renovation but just to put it in very brief the divine renovation ministry was begun by father james melon he is the founder of the divine renovation ministry and he has written a lovely book under the title divine renovation from a maintenance to a missional parish in which he has spelled out his experience and the process and then he has followed it up with another book beyond parishes two wonderful books which speak of moving from maintenance which i was getting caught up the routine to a, a, a parish and mission board but it is not maintenance to mission it's not two different things it is maintaining your church but with a mission angle with a mission perspective and thanks to the coaching which i receive twice a month from fiona o'reilly who is my divine renovation coach you know because of fiona and because of the divine renovation process the the parish was making progress the passion was ma- parish was making progress and in this lockdown we did things like you know we formed a vision statement we we set up priorities for our parish not only that we said how to implement these priorities and looking all this was happening while people were becoming missionary disciples or at least first striving to be disciples i don't know whether we have reached the missionary disciple step as yet but i'm waiting for that time as they, as as father rob said from the when the disciples become disciples when the disciples are able to go beyond and bring other people into the church that is what i'm waiting for and the leadership summit that we had over the last three sundays of august the 9th the 16th and the 23rd helped us very much in the meantime father savio has been tirelessly working towards casting of the vision he does that during sermons he spends some time after the online sunday service to speak to the people about it getting the members of the parish pastoral council on board inviting all small christian community animators to do the alpha to be able to take the change forward being missionary disciple is not for everyone baptized in sorry it's not for everyone baptized in christ as he constantly reminds us that it is not not just for the priests but an invitation to all to become missionary disciples so we follow this by action having the guests who have completed alpha to go back and apply this in, in their ministries as we are doing so in the parish liturgical team and the sunday school so all these are efforts made to help change the culture of our parish yeah. i am afraid that you know we might be looking at ourselves or people might be thinking we are a miracle parish but we are very much a work in progress we have begun the journey just a year back and we've just about taken our first <clears throat> baby steps people are coming to christ they are experiencing christ prayer fellowship is happening but the alpha creates creates people and leads them into a ministry alpha has created the culture but now we have to carry this culture into other ministries in the parish in other parts of the parish life the question that comes to my mind just now is after alpha what in the catholic context and it is here that you know the follow up of the divine renovation ministry and process is helping us because we are looking at the way forward together with the divine renovation we are thinking about discipleship yes but we are also thinking about fellowship ministry worship this is what we will enter now into the second year of our coaching and we will have to build that up in our parish we also have to build up other structures other processes and put them in place 
it is challenging also we realize that you know the cost of divine renovation especially for us is huge our parish was lucky because we got the support of uh, alpha asia pacific from liz nihal reverend tolman and company they they helped us and they support us the but that is just one aspect the bigger challenge is continuity the next leader of st dominic savior parish the parish priest after me has to kind of continue this process that is where the lay people come in and that is where our leaders come in each one has to take responsibility for the missionary thrust of st dominic savior parish personally the parish priest also has to spend a lot of time a lot of energy for prayer planning studying executing these plans and most of all you have to be filled with a passion you know as i think father james says you know passion is that which does not allow you to sleep at night i can assure you i have had many sleepless nights but thanks god thanks be to god fiona and the divine renovation have led me through those nights but i am sure they are not over as yet <laughs> Thank you Father Savio and I know in our work with parishes from you know 40 different dioceses and countries around the world in all sorts of different contexts we know that sleepless nights can be part of the journey but so is the joy of watching parishes come alive because it is possible and in our experience we found that the the three key principles that we speak of hold true it doesn't matter what size parish you have what context it's in you know putting evangelization first as the recent letter from the congregation of clergy has asked us to do you know that's part of what helps a parish come to life the other two principles that are equally important the second is the the reliance on the holy spirit that role of prayer you know we surveyed parishes catholic parishes recently and less than 50% are intentionally praying for renewal let on our own strength we can't renew anything this is grace and nature we've got to bring the best that we can humanly speaking and we know that when we do that and rely on the lord on prayer he answers and things start to change and so that that reliance on the holy spirit which is modeled and taught so beautifully through the alpha program can start to infuse the wider culture of the parish as prayer becomes not just a habit but the life force the, the driving force that sustains uh, everything because the holy spirit walks with us and thirdly leadership is needed because this is a significant change in so many parish contexts and that is a leadership that respects everything that is proper to the ministerial priesthood but also calls forth on leashes uh, all of the gifts of the baptized every layman and woman in the parish has a role to play and so the joy of seeing both sides of the the ministerial priesthood and the laity being able to come together for the sake of mission is also part of the key and it can happen as father savio has shared it doesn't happen overnight uh, there's step by step a journey to be gone on but in his parish and in parishes around the world we see that that those three keys the primacy of evangelization, reliance on the power of the Holy Spirit, and the best of leadership, all grounded in the Eucharist, enable parishes to come alive and be everything that we are we are called to. As a ministry, we support that journey through a bunch of free digital resources at divinerenovation.org, a set of webinars that tackle the tough challenges of moving from maintenance to mission, the successes, the struggles, the wins, the failures, and we walk alongside pastors and their parishes as they go on this journey. And we also uh, provide coaching to parishes. And so I'm conscious with only a little time left, but, but I guess the best way to, to really sum all of that up is to, to hear from a pastor who's been through that journey and, and if I you know was to ask you to sum up in just one or two sentences Father Savio what's what's been your take on on this whole journey over the last year and how would you encourage others thinking of going going the same way yeah you know I was taken up with Father Rob said God takes a mess and makes a message you know yes so taken true. what is there in Dominic Savio it, it, it may not have been a mess but he took that raw material and with the help of Alpha and with the help of the divine renovation I think he has begun to unlock our parish. You know, the doors are being opened, and we are looking towards the future, where the people are filled with this missionary initiative. And yet, at the same time, I just want to close with this: that it's not, you know, Alpha and Divine Renovation is not about personal, uh, personal holiness. Holiness is there, and it is a start. But this holiness goes together with mission. So Absolutely. it is my holiness and mission. When that goes together. I think you know it's not either or it has to be as you say both and and when that holiness and mission goes together we can be a wonderful missionary people 
Absolutely. And, and look, we could we could talk for hours on, on this, but I'm <laughs> conscious, Kevin, uh, you know, we wanted to leave some time for, for questions and answers as well. So let me hand back to you and you can maybe let us know if there's any questions that have come in people would like us to respond to. Yeah, there's, there's certainly a few questions coming in. Uh, first of all, thank you, Fiona, uh, Father Savio and Avril for sharing your experiences. Uh, let's get to the questions right now. And um, was it easy? Is it easy to include non-faith guests in Alpha? Maybe, Father, you'd like to take that one. Yeah, that was one of the sensitive points for us here in India to invite, let's say, unchurched people or non-Christians was challenging, very difficult, also very dicey given the situation in our country. So we, we do it, but we go a little slow on that and we are a little cautious. Would you like to add anything, Fiona? I would just say that there are a number of countries around the world where there are challenges and in, in sensitivities that parishes need to be aware of. But at the end of the day, relationships count. And, you know, I know Avril talked about the, for instance, the situation of mixed marriages and how that has opened up a space for, for inviting others in. And even where there's the, the freedom to invite people of all faiths and none into to conversation about, you know, what God got to say about our lives. It's still not the easiest conversation for us Catholics to get into. We're not very good at evangelizing. And so one of the, the things about Alpha is it teaches people to share their faith story, to say, here's what God did for me. And if that's something you're interested in, you know, you might like to check this out. And so there can be a very gentle ask that's very sensitive to the, the particular cultural context that we're in. And Alpha really enables that. Mm, yeah, certainly. Uh, Fiona, if I could just stay with you, uh, we have a question here. You talked about leadership earlier on. If a parish priest is not involved in Alpha and Divine Renovation, what can lay people do? It's a great question. And look, we are a hierarchical church. Our, our ecclesiology is such that, that hierarchy is, is core to, to our understanding. And so firstly, we need to be praying for our priests, for our bishops, for all those called into to leadership in the church. And secondly, we need to be showing a willingness to serve, to walk alongside them. And I know that there have been many instances where rightly pastors have had some concern about, well, look, what is this like? You know, how can I be sure it will be right for, for my parish? And there it can be so helpful just to introduce them to the online digital resources so that they can hear what other pastors have to say about their experience of Alpha, of Divine Renovation. And also there are there are a range of so opportunities, things like this, things like uh, we run global webinars where pastors can actually discuss with one another what their experience is. And that can often just help give a safe space to answer the questions that pastors rightly have and give them the opportunity to understand what's involved so they can then take a next step. So pray and perhaps signpost them to chances to talk with, with brother pastors who can share their experience of how this works and why it's worth a try. Thank you. Uh, Avril, if I can just go to you, something along the lines of the same question, because you're closely connected with the lay people there. You know, Alpha is often viewed as the starting point, but also there's a mission aspect to it. Uh, how do you see the lay people taking on this, this role of leading the, the program? Uh, so that that's the whole thing. We are literally a work in progress uh, from, from just being within ourselves and inward focusing to now. Uh, Alpha is actually like a channel for us to open up to start sharing. So most of us have always been hesitant, traditional Catholics who just went to church, pray for ourselves. Alpha is opening that up, that up for us and uh, being able to make us more missionary, uh, being able to have to talk to people. So sometimes some of that uh, disconnect lies with ourselves where we are not able to approach people in the right way. We have to be comfortable doing that. And then I suppose we'll also be, uh, be able to be missionary, uh, invitational back to be missionary. Mm. Yeah, if I may say Alpha is run completely by the lay people in a parish. I'm only a happy observer. <laughs> and I just give the direction here and there, but the lay people do it. And Father, are there parishioners who serve in your church but do not want to experience Alpha? What do you say to them? How do you solve this? Uh, see, we've just had a couple of Alphas. In fact, you know, so people are still wanting to join Alpha. Maybe after one year or two years, people might not want to and we'll be struggling for people. And that will force us to go beyond our peripheries and go outside. And that is what we're trying to do already. We're trying to reach the people on the periphery of our parish and outside our parish, the unchurched. And, and that is the way we grow. Okay, thank you. I think that's all the questions we have uh, for now. Uh, thank you, Father Savio and Avril. And also, thank you, Fiona. You'll be staying back for the uh, panel discussion. And also, uh, if I can just mention um, some of the work that uh, Divine Renovation is doing, you have a series with Father Mellon on um, 
on a five-part video series. Would you like to say something about that? Sure. So the Congregation for Clergy in the last couple of weeks has published an amazing letter uh, to both clergy and, and all the baptized, really just exploring uh, the whole kind of pastoral, theological and canonical background that informs the call for every parish to be missionary, to evangelize and uh, documents from the Vatican. It, it can be helpful to have that unpacked. And so we've done a series of videos, the short videos, which really take every aspect of the document and explore it, look at what it's saying, some of the challenges, some of the opportunities, and then also uh, share some of our experience over the past couple of years working with parishes who are already applying uh, these kind of insights and seeking to be missionary and talk about what are the struggles, what works, what doesn't, what are some of the things to bear in mind. So that's free. You can find that on our website. We'd love to, to just be able to bless people with that resource to, to help them think about some first steps in this space. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll be putting that links in the chat columns on our uh, wherever we are live streaming it so people can go there and watch the five part series. Once again, thank you, Fiona. Thank you, Avril. Thank and you. Uh, thank you for the Savio for you. making.